tell us more about Anthropic. Tell us about what the foundational philosophical ethic is of the company. You've innovated some really interesting things on how to make a responsive, explainable, steerable AI. Maybe we just start with an open book. Like, share with the audience what Anthropic is all about. Sure. So really, Anthropic is aiming to build transformative general AI systems mm. that are safe, reliable, steerable, ethical. Mm. And that's kind of a, like, it's a lofty goal, right? Um, so much of, I think, why we were founded was this desire to build generative AI tools and systems and products that people could use while feeling really, really confident mm. that what we were putting on the market was trustworthy, reliable, and safe. Yeah. And that's taken a number of different forms you know, over the past few years. But I think specifically, we have this sort of belief that incorporating these technical safety streams into training of the model really from day one is the best way to ensure that when they actually are in a product form and getting into the hands of customers that they're going to be safe. I love how uh, your team has thought about using the UN Human Rights Declaration as a starting point mm -hmm. for how to really moderate content and moderate the algorithm's development. Can you speak to that a little bit? Definitely. So um, the this kind of idea that we came up with, our, our brilliant research team came up with, is this idea of giving Claude, which is our you know, generative AI tool, mm -hmm. uh, something we call a constitution. It's mm -hmm. called constitutional AI. And to just sort of go back a little bit to kind of how we got there, the way that you sort of used to, and by used to, I mean like three, three years ago or like, or like a, year, a year and a <laughs> half ago, um, you used to train you know, these models to make sure, hey, they're not sort of saying nasty things yeah. or they're not replicating bad inherent biases, was you would do this technique called reinforcement learning from human feedback, which we also kind of co-worked on when we were at OpenAI. And... Reinforcement learning from human feedback is just essentially a way of like giving the model like grades, right? It's like A plus, you said something nice, like D minus, you said something mean. And that, that was reasonably effective in changing some behavior of the models. But what we found was that um, a lot of sort of subtler things about how models R respond, react, things that they're sort of deeply believing are much harder to train out in those sort of individual cases. And so we had this idea of giving the model kind of a, a broader constitution mm -hmm. in the way that you would in a society to mm -hmm. basically say, what are ways of behaving and engaging mm -hmm. that are good for you know humans, right, for people, and that don't perpetuate some of the problematic things that might be in training data. Yeah. And so, so much of you know what we saw with constitutional AI was a, you know, we we shouldn't necessarily be the arbiters of like what is is good or bad, right? Mm -hmm. We're a group of, you know, at the time, 100 people, 150 yeah. people, now 350 mm -hmm. people, based in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Let's like think about what broader documents that already yes. exist in the world that have grappled with some of these challenges and incorporate. I think we have something like 17 different, mm -hmm. you know, founding documents in Amazing. the constitution. Amazing. Um, you know, I find it super interesting that uh, you've chosen sounds like a number of global documents. Mm -hmm. And so one of the questions that come up is society is very, very diverse. Mm -hmm. And so how do we adjust for specific cultures or, you know, ethnic orientations of what good and bad is? And how, how do you think about that as a team? Because it's, it's complicated, right? Yeah. You know, how, you know, Claude might respond to uh, let's just take myself, an Asian American born in Canada yep. might be very different in conversation with someone who was born, you know, in Taiwan, who has a very different maybe view of, you know, sort of humanity and morality. So how do you think about those, those challenges? Yes, this is a great question. And it's something our teams think about a lot, right, mm -hmm. for sort of the work that we do. So I think constitutional AI is sort of a great framework for thinking about what are the inputs that you would want to put into a model to mm. kind of guide its ethics. But those don't necessarily have, those inputs can change, mm -hmm. right? So depending on the culture, the country, the company even that's using our models, there's probably some degree of latitude over time that we can build in to say, hey, do you want to change sort of mm -hmm. some of the founding documents of the model that you use? That being said, I do think there are some guardrails that we feel strongly should be in place, you know, regardless, right? Claude can't, uh, you know, help people create weapons, right? It's like trained to ensure that it, you don't do something harmful to people or animals. And I think sort of regardless of where it's deployed, those are, those are kind of 
um, you know, company universal yes. things that yes. we feel, you know, believe strongly in. Um, another thing I'll point to is we recently did uh, a sort of set of research that was kind of building on this constitutional AI idea called collective constitutional AI. Mm. And what we did there was instead of using just a set of founding documents, mm. we actually uh, pulled a very large kind of demographically diverse mm. group of people from sort of around, uh, you know, around the country and in other parts of the world mm. to see like how did they react to some of the oh. things that were in our constitution yeah. and what did they kind of collectively come to on some of these sort of ethical questions and how far was the distance between sort of what our constitution said and what the collective oh. constitution said. Huh.